When you talk about turkeys, litter management is critical. Uh, and when I think of turkey litter management, uh, you'd think about more working with the litter than broilers. Turkeys are brooded with shavings. Uh, versus chickens, there's more straw used. You can see there where you get some fecal buildup from just normal feeding and drinking. Uh, you will see the fecal buildup here. That is where the oocysts are. You talk about, there is an old saying that I heard from a, a turkey guru years ago, and, and it went something like this. Uh, good litter management is doing what needs to be done before it needs to be done. Doing before it needs to be done. And so when you get litter in the feeders, <laughs> you've got to consider there is oocysts there. And as the birds age, you like to uh, keep that under control. If there's too much, you remove it. You will tend to see some buildup of litter. It's normal. You'll tend to see some buildup near the drinker lines, around the feeder lines, and uh, that buildup is cakey litter. That's moisture that uh, takes place. Pretty well the difference between turkeys and chickens is the style of drinker. This is what they call a nipple cup. It's really a nipple drinker, but it's a saucer. Turkey brooder barns are cleaned every crop you put in. They're washed and disinfected. But if you're thinking about it, do you really get all of the dust up there? No, you never get it all. You will get oocysts surviving in this barn. Even on top of the heaters, there's dust. With the, with the parasitic vaccines, we really need to manage the process when the bird is on the farm. In order uh, for the, the, uh, the eggs, the oocysts to sporulate and be infected and be able to produce that recycling, we need three things in the barn. We need uh, oxygen, we need moisture, and we need heat, warmth. The moisture component is probably the most critical to get. With turkeys versus chickens in Canada, there's more coccidiosis vaccine use because turkeys have a long life, uh, 15, 16 weeks for these tom turkeys, and uh, so that's a long time. And if the birds are all over the place and don't encounter each other's droppings very often, they still won't be exposed to those oocysts, even if the oocysts are being perfectly taken care of temperature and humidity wise. Um, on the other hand, if humidity isn't managed correctly, they could be encountering each other's droppings, but the oocysts won't sporulate and be infective and the cycling won't occur. And just anything that will ensure that the birds have the ability to react to the vaccine. So just in general, healthy birds, well nourished and well looked after, those birds will respond much better to the vaccine. I think if you use a live vaccine, you need to be engaged. And so that means the, the monitoring the barn conditions. If you do not manage that process and get adequate recycling for at least two cycles, going up to 14, 15 or 16 days, then your vaccine definitely will not be as effective. I think that if you're that producer that's thinking about starting to use a coccidial vaccine, it might be a good idea to find a good service person and also your veterinarian to help you through those first few flocks. They can look at your management before and during the flock and also to be patient. It takes a few flocks to see the best results and also to change the, the imeria that are growing in the barn naturally. So getting some help for the first few flocks is a good idea. And it's very important actually if you're using a anticoccidial vaccine that you do not use any um, anticoccidials in the feed. You don't want to put an anticoccidial into a feed that is being fed to a bird that's been vaccinated because you'll literally kill the vaccine. Because what you're trying to do when you have a vaccine for coxie is you're actually trying to produce a, a, a vaccine reaction and you want coxie to develop and you're putting, you're actually 
um, introducing a strain that's very sensitive. So everyone who's involved in the, in the, in the flock of, in question needs to be aware of what's going on so that the appropriate feed can be given to vaccinated birds or vice versa, that, that the medicated feed can be given to non-vaccinated birds in order to control the coccidiosis. And if you were to come along and then feed, uh, say from day one, you put in a really an anti-coccidial in the feed, you would prevent the bird from getting the coxy vaccine. So it needs to be a bit of a team effort. This is what most of Ontario has been doing for years. There's basically three types of anti-coccidials. One is uh, synthetic chemicals. If you use a chemical, the chemical coccidiocidal products tend to shut down all oocysts production. However, the only drawback is that with repeated use, you do get resistance developing. The second class of anticoccidios, which is the ionophores. And they are produced by fermentation, and the ionophores are really the mainstay of the anticoccidials. Many of the ionophore products we have today registered in Canada have some antibacterial effect, and they also allow some oocyst cycling at the same time that they will actually prevent uh, some of the oocysts from completing the life cycle. They have um, a, a specific, they affect ion transport into the cell membranes of the protozoa, a very complex type of, of um, mode of action, and they tend to have been used for a long period of time and are less prone to resistance than some of the chemicals. There's now a third class and that is what I call potentiated ionophores and those would be mixtures of an ionophore with uh, nicarbazin. Our goal with anticoxidial medication programs is to provide uh, programs that offer really good protection, performance, they're cost effective and they also maintain the life of the products themselves. We are concerned about antimicrobial resistance. The genetic basis for resistance within the coccidia is not very complex and in some cases it's a single gene change, a single mutation which is, can cause resistance. The only way to cope with that actually is to change to another anticoccidia. To minimize resistance you want to make sure you don't use them continuously, you want to be strategically placing them in potentially the right, the right season of the year and only using them every so often for potentially one or two flocks at a time. It is very common in Canada to start off on day one with a coccidiostat. There are fewer anticoccidials used in turkeys. A number of these ionophore compounds are uh, actually toxic for turkeys. And so with turkeys, much like chickens, we use rotational programs, coccidiostat rotational. We would have two programs per year, a summer and a winter program. Of course, the production cycle is much longer with the turkeys. We would generally just uh, use an anticoccidial for the first eight weeks and by that time they will have developed their own immunity and no longer need to be on an anti-coccidial until, until market. And the only coccidial stats that we're using there are products that have uh, uh, no withdrawal um, and then they can be used very safely. Uh, there are some chemical products that do require withdrawal. So the reason why there is a withdrawal for some of the anticoxidial medications, it's to do with the clearance of the drug from the tissues of the bird. That is Health Canada's decision as to how many days withdrawal there will be, zero up to four or five potentially in some of these anticoxidial medications. The local uh, management is the absolute key to success. The one where they're in the facility several times a day. They're checking the waters, they're checking the feeders, and they're particularly checking the ventilation and making sure everything is, is good there. They're gonna get the best results. And they're the ones that actually decisions should be made on. Now, if all those things are in place and they're not getting good results, uh, maybe there is a reason to change anticoxidial programs. But uh, they shouldn't be, those decisions shouldn't be made based on the problem farms. It'll get better with time and people need some experience. That's what they need. There's five or six Ontario veterinarians that specialize in poultry and taking advantage of their knowledge. I mean, that's what they do. They're professionals and um, it's, it's money well spent. Mm -hmm.